Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about using references or citations in papers. Almost any time you write a lengthy paper, you're gonna to need to use citations. And how you approach adding them into your paper is gonna depend on what academic level you're at. Are you an undergrad writing a single paper for a class? Or are you a graduate student writing some lengthy thesis chapters? Well, let's go through those situations and look at good ways that you can add citations to your papers. By the way, if you find this video helpful, please think about subscribing to my channel so you can hear about my other videos. All right, so group number one, which I'm gonna call the undergraduates. You're in this group if you write an occasional paper for a class and those papers aren't really linked by a theme. So for example, the references or citations you use in one paper aren't really going to be used in the other papers that you write. So there's no real need to curate a bibliography. If you're in this group, then the easiest bet for doing citations is probably the built-in tools in Microsoft Word or in Google Docs. There are several good online guides how to do this from libraries or librarians. So I'm just gonna roughly summarize it here. All right, so I've got this great document that I'm working on. Up here on the ribbon, I'm at the home screen and I move over to the references tab and then I slide over to the right and I wanna open up the citations panel. So this is where all my different citations would end up. Down at the bottom here, I'm gonna click this plus sign and it's gonna allow me to enter a new citation. So then I can start going through and type in all the details. And then once I've got all my citations entered, I can start inserting them into my document. Once I'm all done with my writing, I can just go to the end, click on the bibliography, and insert the format that I want. Word will automatically grab all of the citations that I specifically used and use them to build the bibliography. All right, group number two, who are probably graduate students. In this instance, you're doing a lot of writing regularly or based around a theme, and you're gonna reuse citations from say one paper into the next paper. So for example, if you're getting a PhD and you're writing several chapters, which are all linked together, you're going to be reusing citations in each of those chapters. Also, it's kind of likely that you're citing significantly more references than the people in group one. You might be reading a lot of journal articles as I described in one of my previous videos, and you wanna keep track of those journal articles and then cite a subset in the next thing that you write. If you're in this group, then the tools in Word are not really gonna cut it anymore and you need to really utilize a reference manager. A reference manager is a separate program which keeps track of all your references in a database. And there's a lot of benefits to using a program like this. So the main con is that this is gonna take more time, but if you use this more than once, you're gonna start accruing benefits, which I haven't mentioned yet. Why am I not mentioning? So what are the actual pros or benefits from using a reference manager? So first up, these programs typically have extra tools to help you collect and organize your research material. If I go to the webpage for a journal article, for example, there's typically a link on the side there where I can download the citation data in several different formats that are used by different reference manager programs. This makes it pretty easy to then just paste that into my reference manager. These programs can also help you organize your stuff by using keyword flags or tags on the entries. So the second pro is that you can maintain control over your own reference database. So you can move it to different computers as you need to, you can back it up when you need to. Most of these programs store their data just as plain text files, so they're easy to access if anything goes wrong. Pro 3, some of the fancier programs take this even a step further where they offer cloud sync and cloud backups of your database, or they offer browser extensions where they'll automatically add it into your database if you visit the journal's website for that paper. Next up, number four, these programs still interface with your word processor, so you're not actually sacrificing anything by moving your references to an outside program. And last, you have much greater flexibility on your bibliography format. So most publishers use their own style of bibliography. They don't use standard ones like Chicago or APA. So it's often easier to get your bibliography in what the publisher requires if you're using an external reference manager program. Day two, day two. 
Well, I'm sure there are more, but those are five pros that I think are pretty solid. So if you've gotten this far and you think this reference manager business sounds promising, you might be thinking, which one should I use? Well, actually the Wikipedia entry for reference management software is really excellent and it's a good place to help you figure out what to use. This page has several great tables that can help you figure out what software to use, whether you use a specific operating system or whether you wanna work with a specific word processor. You can see which ones are being updated frequently, which ones are free or pay to use, uh, which ones give you direct access control over your database, and so on and so on. I'd highly recommend checking that resource out. I wanna highlight two options to show how these programs work in tandem with your word processor. So if you like to work in Microsoft Word, then a popular reference manager for that is Zotero. I should make a disclaimer that I've never used Zotero because they don't write in Microsoft Word and everything has pros and cons, so you should really evaluate that for yourself. But in Zotero, you would have all of your references entered and organized in their software. From there, you would use a plugin with Microsoft Microsoft Word so that you can click a button and insert a specific citation at a specific point. In the background, the program is keeping track of the citations that you use, and at the end, it can generate a bibliography for you, which you can insert into Word. So as I mentioned in my last video, I do all of my writing in LaTeX, and LaTeX has a companion reference manager format called BibTeX. For me, since I use Mac OS, I use a program called BibDesk, which lets me manage all my references, and it edits a file called a BibTeX file. Recently, I've also been editing this BibTeX file by hand because it's a way to teach myself Emacs. But anyway, as I'm writing in LaTeX, I can insert a simple cite command. Then when I go to compile my document into a PDF, I can insert another command, which calls BibTeX, and it goes through and finds all those site commands and inserts the correct reference into that location. At the same time, it goes through and creates a bibliography for me at the end. So then this all gets inserted automatically as I'm generating the PDF. So those examples might have sounded a little complicated to you, but if there's one key takeaway from this video, I want you to realize that as soon as you start using citations more than once in multiple locations, there's a whole suite of programs out there that are designed to help you manage this reference database. and designed to make your life easier when you're using citations in multiple documents. So if you're already using a reference manager that you like, share it in the comments below and let other people know about it. And if you found this video helpful, uh, help me out and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.